Hello and uh, welcome to What the Hell Programming. In this video I'm going to be teaching you about memory, computer memory, and I want to start a new series and this is going to be the first in the series and I'm basically going to be explaining how computer memory works in great detail for coders. So basically if you are a programmer or are new to programming, or let's say you've been doing like just JavaScript and you've been getting into really advanced stuff and you're getting confused about how data structures work or what memory really is and what's going on behind the scenes, or I mean, even if you do um, like application, like business application programming in C Sharp. Um, and you're not really doing a lot of low-level or systems type of work, then you might benefit from this video. And don't worry, I'm going to keep these videos short because I had a habit in the past of rambling on way too long and just making the video too long. And, you know, it's I know from personal experience that um, we need to break this stuff up into, into small chunks because it gets quite complicated quite fast. However, we're going to keep it fun. And uh, it's actually not complicated at all when you do break it up properly. So um, this is lesson number one. It's going to be really short because I, I need you guys to internalize this stuff. So what I mean by that is take it a small bite at a time and really understand each step. And then what I'm going to say today is going to make a whole lot more sense or it's going to be uh, expanded upon in the next video. So. Okay, so as you see here on the screen, um, I have this over here, I have these uh, spaces, right? It looks almost like a parking lot. I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I want you guys to start thinking of computer memory like this from now on. Um, you have to forgive me on this arrow because this is my first time using this, uh, this brand new electronic drawing pad here. So <laughs> it's going to be a pretty weak performance, but... So I want you to think of memory as slots, okay? Think of them almost like a parking lot. I mean, if it helps you to think of them better as houses or like swimming pool rows or whatever works for you, um, do that. But for my purposes here, I'm going to say this is a parking lot and this is uh, space number one, space two, space three, space four, space five, and space six, right? So this is how I want you to start thinking about memory. I don't want you to start. I don't want you to be thinking about memory as this right here, because this this is not memory. This is this is syntax, okay. And knowing how the actual computer memory works, which is over here, and knowing syntax for writing it and doing doing operations with it are two completely different things. And like you might be saying, well, I don't really need to know about how computer memory works. Um, and see, that's where the problem begins because you do actually need to know how computer memory works and the more that you know about this stuff the easier your life will be especially if you get like a new job or a new task and you have to start working with a different language or um let's say you need to start doing some lower level type of programming like everybody you know pe people often cringe when they hear uh the word c now you know like uh, c programming c plus plus sometimes too um and the things that make those languages so difficult have to do with this whole memory model thing that I'm, I'm going to be teaching in this in this course here and so if you understand this stuff you'll understand like literally every programming language and data structure and you'll understand like you, you won't know it all but you'll be able to relate to it so that when somebody introduces you to a new language or a new data structure like you'll be like oh okay so it's, it's kind of like that rather than like completely lost so what I want you to do today is just is scratch this out of your head in terms of uh, what you think of when you're thinking of putting something in memory okay and I want you to adopt this type of thinking right here where um, I'm putting something into a slot and that slot has a space for uh, for data right here you know in the in the in the space you can you can fill it with uh, you know numbers you could fill it with words you could fill it with pretty much anything that you would put in uh, a regular variable you know like an int a double a float um, you know strings whatever I want you to think of putting data into these slots and then each slot having a number 
or we'll call it an address. How about that? We'll call this so. So each slot has an address and it has a space for information. Okay. And that's all I want you to do today. I just want you to think about that. And when you've internalized this, then I want you to come back and watch the next video. So that might not take you all day. Maybe you already know this. Then just go ahead and go to the next video. Um, but this is going to build a foundation for what's coming. And as you can see, this is actually painfully simple stuff. Okay, memory is painfully simple. It's just a bunch of slots, and each slot has a number. But things get more complicated as you go on in terms of how we we deal with all this stuff. So um, that's all we need to do today, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.